Aloha guys, welcome back. This is Ukulele FPV and today we have a review on the Ieshin TX5258. It is a 5.8 gigahertz re trans video transmitter. It has 72 channels. It has race band. It goes, it has Pit mode 25, 200, 500, and 800 milliwatt switchable. You can adjust it OS using OSD. It uses the TBS Smart Audio protocol. So I'm not sure if it works on Betaflight 3.3, but it works on 3.2. It has a 5 volt out for the camera, and it has a microphone and a little LED screen to know what channel you are on. In the box we get a some instructions that tell you how to use it. There's a couple different modes on here and everything else that comes in here. We get this special little harness that has a weird connector if it will focus for us that I'm not exactly sure what this connector is called it, it's kinda weird it has this little button thing so that it doesn't slip out here you can see it on the VTX itself you can see right here we have the microphone the LED, there's a button to use, and then this connector that to, con to disconnect it you have to press on this, so I guess it makes it easier so it doesn't slip out, but it's weird that it's like a different connector than I've ever seen before. It can take direct battery voltage I believe, 7 volts to 24 volts so you just run it straight off your battery you might need a filter or depending on how you like to do it and then here we have it has smart audio 5 volts out ground video ground and 7 to 24 volts it is RPSMA comes with a little whip antenna the rubber ducky RPSMA so if you want to get an antenna replacement for that you would have to get RPSMA and I would highly recommend doing that it is 72 channels so be careful what channels you use many of the channels are illegal I'm not sure why Yixin decides they have to do that with all of their all of their VTXs they think 72 channels will make it sell better but most countries you can't even use it so it's kind of pointless but this goes on right here I wish that it was a different connector maybe the the new one that they've been using the MMX or MCX I'm not sure what it's called I do not have any of those but I wish that this was that because it would work a lot better I guess my B fight has it in it that the one the VTX that it came with has the that type of connector so I guess it would make it better for this it would also make it a lot smaller as you can see here this sticks out it's not that small compared to anything really here is an 18 or 16 by 16 flight controller so it takes up quite a bit of space but with the capabilities that it has, it can go up to 800 milliwatts. So you, this is for probably wing flyers more than anything, because all us quad flyers, we're getting smaller and smaller VTXs that are reliable. It says at 12 volts, it takes about 300 milliamps. So 
plan accordingly. It's got a couple of weird settings in it. There's low power mode, so to enable that, the pit mode, you press and hold this button while you power it on, so that it'll go into 0 0.01 milliwatts, and you can adjust whatever you need to on your quad and figure that out though. I highly recommend not powering up your quad when other people are racing. There is the 72 channel mode, which when you power it up, there are 72 channels. If you can see it here, A, B, E, F, R, and then all the illegal bands, U, O, L, and I guess some of H is illegal, not all of it. So I recommend against using those. It has a racing mode, which you can have four pilots, six pilots, or eight pilots. For four pilots, it just goes on to race band one. What is it? Race band two, four, six, and eight. So it's not really... I guess that, that might work. So you would want to test that out. They also have a six pilot mode and an eight pilot mode. But those use illegal bands, so be careful with that. To get into it, it says you just have to press the button and hold it for like 10 seconds and it'll go into it. And then it says that you have to set it for smart audio mode. So you press and hold it for 10 seconds to enter. enter smart audio mode. But once we hook it up, we will see exactly how to do that. We will go over the how to set it up in Betaflight as well. So overall, it seems like an okay deal for $15, but I really hate how Ishin likes to do that with the 72 channels. We don't need that. It is pointless and it really makes it so that this shouldn't be sold in the US. Anyway, let's put this in the quad and hook it up to the computer and figure all that out. To set this up, what you do is you get the VTX and you hook the power to the battery power. It takes direct voltage. And then you can power your camera off the five voltage out if you don't have an extra pad on your flight controller or whatever. You hook the video in to beta your board to your flight controller board so that you can use OSD, beta flight OSD. And then you hook the smart audio wire to either TX1, TX2, TX3, whichever you are you have open. Just make sure you do it to the TX. And then we come into here to beta flight. We connect it and let's see if it'll find it. Once it's connected, you go into the ports tab and I have it connected to TX1. So we'll find UART1. And all you have to do is come over here to peripherals and TBS smart audio. So this is not the tramp protocol call, it is smart audio protocol. I'm not sure if it will work on 3.3. I have not tried it yet, so I might have to get back to you on that. So you change your UART to TBS smart audio and you save and reboot. And then if you want to, over here in your OSD menu, you can make it so that your Where is it? There's one at VTX channel. So you can show your VTX channel if you want to. I guess I'll throw it in there just for the sake of this video. And so save and you can disconnect. Since we have now set it up in beta flight, we can go over the OSD menu and what we can do in it. So we'll plug it in. And to get into the OSD menu, you put your throttle to the middle, yaw to the left, and pitch forward. In this main menu, you use 
pitch to move up and down and roll to go left and right. So we'll go into features and because it's smart audio we will go to VTX SA and here it will show you the band you are on, the channel and the frequency. You can change to channel A, B, E, Fat Shark or R, race band and you can go from channels 1 to 8 and it'll show you each frequency as you go through it. So that's really nice for setting up what channel you want to be on and it, you don't have to get in there and mess around with the buttons on the VTX. You can also change the power so 25, 200, 500, 800 and you would use 800 or 500 for long range but I only need 200 for the type of flying I am doing right now because I don't have a receiver that can go that far and you can come in here and click set. In configuration you can do this first thing says open model so it will be either set as free or race and if it's in race you can only go into race channels which I believe are 100 gigahertz apart and then for select mode frequency select mode it's either in channels or you can manually select the frequency and you can set which frequency you want it to be in once you go into the other frequency mode and then you can do pit mode here which will say PIR and then it will show it, you can see it up there. And that makes it so that it is on like 0 0.01 megawatts so that you don't really bother anyone else. But to get there you have to first get in here. So that, that could be a problem. But other than that, we just set whatever power we want, click set, go back, back again and then save and exit and you will be on the channel that you want as you can see up there it says E22 which is channel E2 at the second setting of power if we go in here and change it to 500 it will say E23 so 1 is 25, 2 is 200, 3 is 500, and 4 is 800. Anyway, it's a nice feature and it's great that it works. And I will try in 3.3 and get back to you guys on that. Anyway, let's get back to the bench and show you how I set it up and give you my final thoughts. Before I show you guys my setup, I just want to show you some pictures of the VTX. I forgot to weigh it earlier and so here it is. It is on a kitchen scale so it's not the best and most accurate scale but it works. The VTX itself weighs about 8 grams. It is close to the advertised 7.8 grams so that's, that's pretty accurate. But then when you see with the antenna that it comes with it's about 18 grams and with the pagoda ten an antenna that I am using it is also about 18 pounds so this is not for lightweight builds it's definitely for those who are trying to go long range and have room in their builds the setup here as you can see I just zip tied it to the top plate I have the wiring up here is the battery power the video out or video into the VTX and the ground and I just have it set up with the wires that were on my original VTX I had to kind of splice them in there and then over here this little green wire that is the the smart audio. So this one right here I had an extra little connector and I was able to just stick it in there. It is on TX1 as I said before. So it works nicely. It fits in there really well. 
and I was able to, I'm able to get it closed. My final thoughts on this are for $15 it's a pretty good BTX. I'm not exactly sure if the power is exactly what it says. We know that Ishin BTXs they have they tend to say that it's a certain wattage, but it really isn't that and it depends on the channels. I hate that it uses it has a couple of illegal bands. But if you're using it with OSD and smart audio, you can't really set it to those anyway, so that's good and that's a plus to it. I don't like that they come with the rubber ducky antenna. I wish that instead of having one of these cheap little antennas, they would maybe give us a pagoda or something. I know that they have them because they put them in different builds, but I guess that would raise the price a little bit. It's also being RPSMA. A lot of people don't like that. They prefer SMA and everyone's moving to the new connectors so that you can that are a lot lighter and smaller so I don't know why they're sticking with RPSMA in this. Anyway that is really all. It's a good VTX. Oh one more thing. I see that there is some interference when I do punch outs on this. My old VTX was perfectly fine. It didn't have any issues. But this one, as I punch out, I see lines and there's noise in the feed. So I need to get a capacitor to make it, to get rid of that. So that's kind of annoying and it's weird that my other VTX was perfectly fine and then this one just doesn't work. Anyway, if you are fine with putting a capacitor on your build, you like having smart audio and you want a lot of power, then this is a pretty decent VTX for you. It works well and I'll keep flying it and I'll try it on 3.3 and hopefully I'll be able to get back to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again and aloha.